Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Programming with Python 2.7 tutorial, where I'm going to eventually cover pretty much anything you'd want to know in regards to how to use the Python programming language. Today, I'm going to go over functions, and specifically to start off, this line of code here is used to define what function to call when the program starts. And the function it's telling the Python interpreter to call specifically is the function called main. Now, this doesn't have to be main, but you probably always want to use main because that's pretty consistently used, but I could just as easily call this turnip. And how you create a function inside of Python is to use the three letters DEF followed by the name of the function, followed by some braces, and then followed by a colon. Now if you want to create a function inside of your program and you don't know necessarily what's going to go in there currently, and you want to jump around to some other code but not trigger a whole bunch of errors, you can just simply type in the word pass and it won't trigger any errors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create a function that actually is going to do something, and this function is going to add a couple numbers that are sent to it, again DEF, and here I'm going to define that I plan on receiving two numbers. The first one's called num1, and I'm going to give it a default value of 1. So if they don't send anything, it's still going to complete a calculation. And I'm going to show you a more intricate way of doing this after I do this simple demonstration. And I'm going to use the return command to return the addition of num1 and num2. So basically, pass is then going to call the function add numbers and it's going to return the addition of those numbers. And let's just say that I don't provide any numbers. What's going to happen? No problem. It's going to just use the default values 1 and 1. Well, let's say I then change my mind and decide to send some numbers. You can see now it used these numbers instead of the default. But what happens if I send three numbers? I think you can guess. I get an error. So how do I get around this? How can I create a function that will accept an unlimited number of different arguments that are sent to it and just simply work? No problem. Just tell Python that you want to accept an unlimited number of arguments, and this is A-R-G-S, but this again can be anything. Just make sure you have the star in here. And what this is basically saying to Python is you will accept an unlimited number of arguments. And you want to come down in here, and I'm going to create a variable called final value and assign it the value of 0. Zero. And then basically what I'm saying with this is if statement is if arguments were passed to this function, meaning args has a value, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call my for statement. And again, if you didn't see the other tutorials, I'm sure this is extremely confusing. You should go watch them and it will all be cleared up. And then with the for statement, I'm going to cycle through all the values that are sent. And I'm going to use my shorthand addition notation here. Take the value of i and assign it to final value. And then after that's done, I'm going to return final value back to the column function in main and if they didn't send anything meaning args didn't have a value I'm still going to return a string that says please provide numbers and you can see just like that it went and added everything up and this will work no matter how many numbers I add just continues working so that's a real shorthand way of passing an unlimited number of arguments and then just working through it now I'd like to talk about what they call namespacing or global or local variables inside of Python in any programming language now you see I created this function up here called final value well it's been created so I should be able to print it out right nope this variable is only available inside of the function that created it. So this is known as a local variable or a local namespace. And that namespace will be called add numbers. I don't really like the word namespace. Just think of this as any variable that is created inside of a function exists there and nowhere else. Now, of course, you have your global namespace or your global area and any variables that are created outside of all the other functions that exist are available inside of these said functions. They are global, they are available to everybody. And in fact, now you can see global 10 was here and I printed global 10 and it showed up right here. But one thing that is a little odd is let's say global 10 is equal to 15. Okay, well I changed it and it's available in here. So now global 10 should be equal to 15 everywhere, right? Nope, it is only available inside of the area. While you can print 
and access the global variables, you are not allowed to change global variables inside of functions, except under certain circumstances, which I'm going to demonstrate to you now. There are ways around this, but this is probably not best practice, but since this is an all-encompassing tutorial, I'm going to go over it. If you want to change global variables, being global 10, I'm going to create a function called change global. Now I can either change this global variable in one or another different ways. I can do it by defining that I want to access that global with the keyword global. And then you can see if I come down here and then call change global and run it that it worked. I printed out the original value of global 10, then I called here, changed it, and then printed out the new version. That is one way of changing global variables from inside of functions. Another way to do it is using this globals function here and you can see that I was able to change the global variable that way. And you can access all your global variables with this function as well. So there's a couple different ways or two different ways to change global variables inside of functions, but by default, you're not supposed to do that. And by default, Python doesn't allow you to do that. So either way, it's up to you if you want to do it. I just want to make sure you knew that it was indeed possible. Now let's say I wanted to pass an unlimited number of key valued pairs for processing inside of a function. How would I do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to create a function that accepts an unlimited number of key value pairs. And here you're going to do two stars instead of just one. And I use KV arguments. Sometimes people use KW, but I like V better because key value arguments. And then I'm just going to simply cycle through these key values with a for statement. And I'm going to print them to screen and then return. And I'm going to jump down to main and I'm going to call my function create dictionary. And that's really what this is doing. It's creating a, that's what this ultimately becomes is a dictionary full of what are called tuples, which I explained in a previous tutorial. So it's going to create for me a dictionary full of tuples. And you could use this for customer database type things or whatever you want to do. And I have to put the operator in in here to make this work. If I execute it, you can see it prints out to the screen the information that I placed into it. But I could also come in here and pass multiple tuples. So let's say I create customer one is equal to right like that and execute it. And you can see that it printed out all of those different tuples inside of there. And just so you completely understand it, I'm going to use the type command here to show you exactly what kvargs is. It's a dictionary. So that's a real simple way to create an infinite, I mean, you can put as many of these tuples as you want, create a dictionary that has an infinite number of tuples that can contain any type of information that you would want. And as the final demonstration, I'm going to go through what is one of the most confusing things in programming period for a lot of people. And that is something that's called recursion. With recursion, basically what you're doing is calling for a function inside of itself. So let's say I want to figure out how to calculate a factorial and accepts a single number. And a factorial is just simply like the factorial of three would be three times two times one. So it's the number itself times all those other numbers that lie under it until it gets to the value of 1. So, for example, the factorial 4 would be this. This is just a common mathematical tool that's created whenever you're trying to explain recursion to people. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to check that the number that was passed is not equal to 1, because if it's equal to 1, the factorial of 1 is equal to 1. So there's no point in me doing any calculations here. So I'm just going to return the value of the factorial, which would be 1. However, if they send me any other number, I want to return that number times and here's where you get into recursion. I'm actually calling the same function from inside of the function that I am using. And this is why people get confused. To make this simple, I'm going to first show you here how this guy works by jumping down into main and just calling factorial and sending four, for example. Okay, you can see, and as you know, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. So this worked. But what exactly went on here? And to make this simple, I'm going to make it 3. Basically, what you have to look at this as, as not one function, but as three functions, like I have here on the screen. 
So whenever the factorial function is run the first time, the value of 3 is passed to it, and this value of 3 is not equal to 1, so we're going to skip out of that. Then we're going to multiply 3 times whatever the factorial of 2 is. So this, don't think of this as the same function, think of this as a new function, a different function that multiplies two times whatever the value under two is less than. So in this circumstance, here's your new function that says this function call right here, and I'm saying is two equal to one? No, of course not. Then I wanna multiply two times whatever the factorial of one is. Well, we already know that is one, so here what we gotta do is we'll have one times two, and then this result is passed up to here. The value of two lies right here. So this could actually be looked at as two instead of that factorial. And then we multiply three times two, and you get your final answer, which is six. So that is recursion. Recursion is just a big word for calling a function from inside of itself. So hopefully that was understandable. If it wasn't, leave a question or comment below and I'll be more than happy to put out another tutorial that will explain any questions you guys have. Of course, any other questions or comments, leave them below. Up next, object-oriented programming. Till next time.